This is Afternoon Live. I'm Carrie Gracie. The Prime Minister has reaffirmed her commitment to delivering a Brexit which avoids a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic. Speaking in Belfast in the last hour, Theresa May pledged to reach a deal with the EU that commands what she called broad support and a majority in Parliament. But she ruled out removing the controversial Irish border arrangements known as the backstop from her Brexit deal. Mrs May will head to Brussels to hold talks with the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, on Thursday, all part of her attempt to secure changes to the withdrawal deal. The EU has so far repeatedly ruled out renegotiating the agreement. Well, let's get over to our Ireland correspondent, Emma Vardy, who's in Belfast for us this afternoon. Well, we saw Prime Minister Theresa May addressing a number of business leaders here this afternoon and her main messages to them were that she understood the concerns of businesses here in Northern Ireland who for a long time have lived with the uncertainty of what Brexit may mean for them. And she was also giving that very firm commitment uh, to the government's commitment to ensuring that there would be no hard border, no uh, new checks of any kind on the Irish land border between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic uh, to the south. Now, she had to give a very careful explanation as to why the government had made a U-turn on the existing withdrawal deal um, with the EU. And she also had to uh, address the issue and try to reassure people, uh, businesses, who may have felt some disappointment and frustration that there was a deal on the table that many businesses in Northern Ireland did back. And she gave that careful explanation, saying that she could not have stuck with the deal in its current form because it would not have got through Parliament. I fought hard to make the case for the deal as it stands. I believed it could command a majority in the House of Commons. But I've had to face up to the fact that in its current form it cannot, and the need for changes to the backstop is the key issue. While there were those in Northern Ireland who spoke in favour of it, it is also true that the backstop is not supported by the two main unionist parties here. And this also influenced MPs in England, Scotland and Wales in voting against the deal. I can only deliver on the commitments we have made if I can get a deal through the UK Parliament. And meetings with MPs across the House show that I can only get a deal through Parliament if legal changes are made to the backstop. And that is why the UK Government and a majority of MPs from across the House of Commons supported the amendment from Sir Graham Brady last week. It reaffirms our desire to leave with a deal and our commitment to no hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. And as Sir Graham himself set out, it would mean replacing the backstop with another arrangement which avoids a hard border or making legally binding changes to the backstop to introduce a time limit or create an exit mechanism. I know that the prospect of changing the backstop and reopening the withdrawal agreement creates real anxieties here in Northern Ireland and in Ireland because it is here that the consequences of whatever is agreed will most be felt. I recognise too that the majority of voters in Northern Ireland voted to remain, and that many will feel that once again decisions taken in Westminster are having a profound and in many cases unwanted impact in Northern Ireland and Ireland. So I'm determined to work towards a solution that can command broader support from across the community in Northern Ireland. Now you have to remember, it wasn't all that long ago, at the end of last year, that Theresa May was here in Northern Ireland previously addressing much the same audience of business leaders but back then she had been championing, championing, championing her deal and she'd been telling people to go out and to persuade their MPs, lobby their MPs to back the Irish backstop. So quite a change of tone here and because of that shift, because of that U-turn that we've seen uh, in Parliament, she was asked the difficult question of whether businesses could really trust her. Well, first of all, let's be very clear about this. Um, you've used the phrase U-turn in your question. There is no suggestion that we are not going to ensure that in the future there is provision for this, as we've called, it's been called an insurance policy, the backstop, that ensures that if there is a, the future relationship is not in place by the end of the implementation period, there will be arrangements in place to ensure that we deliver no hard border. Our commitment to that remains. What Parliament has said, what the House of Commons has said, is that they want to see changes to the backstop as it currently exists within the protocol as part of the withdrawal agreement. Uh, the issue that has always been one that Parliament has raised, that's been raised across all sides of the House of Commons, is the potential indefinite nature 
of the backstop. Uh, that's the issue we look to address. We, there are a number of ways to do it, looking at alternative arrangements, uh, discussing with MPs who've put forward proposals on that, looking at the legal changes that will be necessary to give the legal certainty. But the commitment to no hard border absolutely remains. So not an easy line for Theresa May to tread here in Northern Ireland because, of course, don't forget, Northern Ireland is caught in this tension between uh, the DUP and unionist opposition to the backstop and opposition to the withdrawal agree agreement in its current form. And what was a lot of support for the backstop uh, and by the nationalist community broadly and many people who voted in Northern Ireland in the majority to remain in the EU. So a difficult path for Theresa May to find through that. And what's crucial in all of this is the Irish government's position, because the Irish government have held very firm to the backstop, saying it is the only way to legally guarantee that there will be no hard border uh, on this island of Ireland. And we have just heard uh, in the last few minutes that the Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar will be travelling to Northern Ireland on Friday to have meetings with the parties, undoubtedly, to talk about that very issue. Emma, thanks so much. Now let's go to Westminster and talk to our chief political correspondent, Vicky Young. What's the reaction to Theresa May's speech there, Vicky? I think people will be looking at her words very carefully on the alternatives to the backstop, all the changes that Theresa May wants to make. There has been a uh, continual complaint from some Brexiteers in her own party that she hasn't seriously considered other alternatives, that she has stayed wedded to her particular uh, kind of backstop, the agreement, of course, that she's worked two years on. What they're looking for is a sign that she is willing to shift in the light of that huge defeat. So what's happened is they've set up these working groups. One of them is looking at alternative arrangements, partly one of which is to have a free trade agreement, which would mean uh, a very different kind of scenario, which would uh, be an alternative arrangement to the backstop. The other is to have some kind of time limit. The question is whether Theresa May is seriously contemplating you know, the one that wasn't her preferred option. Now, during that question and answer session, she said, I'm not proposing a deal that doesn't contain the backstop. I'm proposing changes. Now, I think it'd be interesting to see whether there are Brexiteers who feel that she is really sticking to her previous path rather than seriously considering what this working group is uh, trying to come up with as an alternative because we don't yet know what she's going to go to Brussels and ask for. Uh, we don't yet know what alternative she thinks is the one that can get through Parliament. So all of that's still very much up in the air until she gets to Brussels uh, and whether it's just a, another discussion with Jean-Claude Juncker or actually putting a serious proposal on the table. Vicky, thanks. Um, let's go inside Westminster and speak to Conservative MP John Whittingdale. Uh, good afternoon. I don't know how much of the Prime Minister's speech you heard, Mr Whittingdale, but what was your first impression? Well, from the reports that I've heard, the Prime Minister gave what is a realistic appraisal of the position. Um, her agreement as it stood was rejected by the House of Commons by over 200 votes. Um, and the reason uh, that most Conservative MPs felt unable to support it and then voted against it was the backstop as it presently uh, is formulated. And the vote that we had uh, with, on the Graham Brady Amendment demonstrated that if uh, changes could be made to the backstop, in particular giving us an ability to leave it, uh, then that could command a majority in the House of Commons. And I think the Prime Minister in her speech recognised that that is the reality. Yes, so she's talking about possible time limits or possible exit mechanisms, but she's not talking about getting rid of it altogether. Does that satisfy you? Well, no, because she's also talking about alternative arrangements. Uh, the proposal that has been put forward by my colleagues in the Conservative Party from both sort of wings of the uh, opinion on this is that we could seek an alternative agreement uh, ultimately a free trade arrangement between us and the European Union, which would mean we didn't need a backstop uh, and that we would have sufficient time in order to obtain that. And so that's the kind of alternative which I think is very much in the interest not just of Northern Ireland but of the UK as a whole, that we have a comprehensive free trade agreement with the European Union. And so do you think the Prime Minister should be listening to the Alternative Arrangements Working Group in what it's coming out. I mean, the reason I suppose I'm pressing on this is that one of the lines in, in the um, Q&A <clears throat> after her speech was, I'm not proposing to persuade people to accept a deal that doesn't contain that insurance policy for the future. 
talking of the backstop. So it sounds like she's imagining a future with an adjusted backstop. Well, I mean, I think unless the backstop has a clear mechanism by which we can leave it and therefore leave the customs union, uh, then it will not get through Parliament. I mean, that was the clear message of the vote that took place on the agreement. And the Prime Minister knows that, and she made that very plain in her speech, that Parliament had spoken, and even though you know, she had tried to persuade MPs to support the agreement in its original form, clearly that had not been successful, and therefore changes had to be made if it was to stand any chance of getting through Parliament. And talking about the chances of things going anywhere, I mean, there aren't exactly positive noises coming out of Brussels or elsewhere in Europe right now um, about movement on opening the withdrawal agreement and, and opening the idea of the backstop. Well, I mean, I spent yesterday at meetings in Brussels and I saw Martin Selmar, the Secretary General, along with my fellow members of the exiting the EU Select Committee, he made it plain that they needed some kind of assurance, some insurance policy in the backstop, but uh, he also was very keen to hear from us what we felt could get a majority in the House of Commons. Uh, and he'd obviously seen the result of the vote on the Brady Amendment, which showed that a majority does exist if we can address the concerns around the permanence of the backstop. Uh, and the proposal that my colleagues have put forward, what has become known as the Maltas Compromise, does, I think, offer that possibility. And I gave him a copy of the proposal, which uh, I hope that he will look at in the same way that the, the Prime Minister has now commissioned a working party to look at the detail of it. John Whittingdale, thank you so much for joining us from Westminster this afternoon. And uh, just a line coming in uh, from the Prime Minister's spokesperson that uh, Theresa May will meet the President 